for survivorship, Katie Holly. tonight. I am honored to have been asked by to be a guest speaker and thank you to my sister Melanie and Relay for Life for inviting me to share my story with you today. My name is Katie Hawley. I'm 17 years old and I will be a senior next year at San Juan Hills High School. I have been fighting cancer since the age of nine. At a young age I had a passion for sports, especially soccer. I played on one of the top teams in the nation and had hopes and dreams of someday playing professionally. The dream was short-lived. On my way down to a tournament in San Diego, I had a really bad stomach ache. I thought it could have just been nerves or spoiled milk, but it turned out to be a lot worse. The next two weeks, I would go through a series of scans, tests, doctor visits, and blood work. Within that time, I was diagnosed with stage three neuroblastoma cancer. I know you've all seen those cancer commercials with the cute little kids smiling, holding their teddy bear, but what you don't see is what happens is when the, can the cameras go off. That's what I'm here for, to let you know what happens when the cameras are gone. Within the first six months, I had three surgeries, two cutting open my stomach 12 inches to take out an egg-shaped tumor, one to place a permanent tube in my chest that would be used for chemo. I had six rounds of chemo. Two were so intense they nicknamed them the Red Devil. It destroys all cells. I was set up on a liquid diet and was attached to a tube for over 15 days. Next, they isolated me in a room, tethered for tubes for 27 days. This treatment was called stem cell therapy, where the chemo is so strong it brings you to the brink of death. The nurse actually told my mom to play with me whenever I was awake because 3% of the children don't make it out alive. The days and weeks were long and painful. I was on morphine 24 seven. Once I recovered from that, I had to do sick radiation treatments to my abdominal area, which may be the reason I am not being told it is impossible for me to have children. Because neuroblastoma is so tricky and it hides, they continued more treatment for an additional six months. One week a month, I was hospitalized and basically used as a guinea pig. I was one of the first out of 50 to be put on this treatment. It was called 1418. They took mouse hormones and humanized them and injected them into me, hoping these new cells would be recognized if any new neuroblastoma cells were forming and they would attack them. This treatment was also very painful. And this time I did actually almost die. My throat closed up and I was unable to breathe. Because of this, many nurses and doctors had to come in and they had to inject an EpiPen into my heart. It went, the whole world went black. <laughs> Once I was awake because of all the drugs, I started to hallucinate. I still can remember the worms I saw crawling out of my fingers and begging my dad to pull over the car on the way home because I saw spiders all over my arms. This lasted about two days. That was just my first year of treatment, and in between in hospital visits, surgeries, chemos, I had MRI scans that could last up to four hours where I could not move at all. I had multiple blood transfusions, fevers, and many nosebleeds where they lasted hours and I was at a point where I was coughing up blood. Yes, this is just a small glimpse of what happens when the cameras go off. So once a year and a half of treatment was over, we cried, we laughed. I was able to go swimming again after the first time in over a year. We thought it was over. I thought the nightmare was finally over. Two and a half years, I started getting headaches. My parents were in denial. They made excuses for them. Maybe I didn't drink enough water, or maybe I was stressed out from school. Unfortunately, that was not the case. It was cancer. The neuroblastoma this time was like moth starting at the base of my skull, going into my brain, and I was about to have seizures if it got any worse. It spread all the way down to my spine and my left leg. Because it was in my bones, I was sent to San Francisco for another guinea pig treatment. 
Once again, I was put into isolation. This time, my mom wasn't even allowed in the room. I was only 11 years old, and I couldn't have anyone in the room for me for 10 days. I did this twice. Uh, the only visit I got was from the nurse that checked my vitals. I was now tagged as high risk, so they continued me on this treatment. An oral chemo I took for seven days every month for about a year. It made me sick for at least 17 days a month. Think about the last time you had the stomach flu. Now multiply that by 17 days every month for a year. I was tired, sick, depressed, and angry. I'm not telling you this to feel sorry for me. I'm not trying to drum up pity, but I want you to know that this battle is absolute hell. Next, the doctors thought I should try a new treatment. I'm embarrassed to say that I don't even know the name of it from all the treatments that I've been on. I would have to make seven round trips to New York City. I know what you may be thinking, it sounds fun, but it really wasn't. Um, I was injected with a thick medication that was so incredibly painful, it felt like you're getting shot in the arm with a bullet. And the stress of just knowing how sick it made me feel was unbearable to think about. Everyone was hopeful that this was the ticket. It was working for a lot of children, but again, it was brand new. It's only been for 25 kids that were, were doing it, but it wasn't. This December, I began having severe headaches. I thought maybe it was from a fall I had from skiing, but it wasn't. The third time, I sat there numb as my parents told me it was back. Here, almost eight years later, my doctor was saying chemo and radiation. Chemo and radiation, it's the same treatment that I've been on even when I was little, it hasn't changed. We need to find a cure and fast. Again, I wanted to paint this picture for you, not to muster up pity, but to hopefully let you see the importance in finding a cure. Even with all the shit I've had to endure, I'm still the lucky one because I am here. Many of my friends that I've met along the way weren't as lucky as me and have passed away. This is just a physical horse of chemo and cancer. But there is an emotional aspect too. The first two times I was diagnosed, I remember coming home to 27 gift, basket, gift baskets ready for me, full of gifts. Instagram posts, praying for you, love you, posters, cards. Then one by one, the slow fade until you find yourself very much alone. The hardest memory for me was back in middle school and the beginning of high school where most of my friends walked away. They told me it was too hard for them, that I was sick, and that I was sick all the time and it was just too hard for them to be around me anymore. I was no longer fun to be around and that I wore on them. One even told me that I put a burden on them and that I put my cancer before their friendship. I didn't even know how to begin to apologize. I won't lie, that broke my heart. It's probably the worst several months of my life. But now that I'm older, I kind of get it. If I could, I would run away from the sick me, from angry me, from depressed me, I would've. But I can't. I can't walk away from the nightmares I have every night. I can't walk away from the fear and ache and every pain that I have daily that it could possibly be cancer again. I can't walk away from the fact that this is my journey and this is my life. I was robbed of my youth and my normal teen years for a long time. I had lost every friend I had ever loved. Cancer affects every single aspect of your life. The one thing that cancer did not take from me was my faith in Jesus Christ. Sometimes I still question why he won't heal me, but until he does, I will continue to put my trust in him and hopefully bring him honor by staying obedient in his word as best as I can and to be an example of love and faith even when my life sometimes sucks. So here I am praying third time is a charm. I now have a, be a handful of friends I'm still a little gun shy about telling them too much about when I'm in pain or feeling sick. I have an amazing boyfriend who makes me laugh every day and I've had a ton of blessings during the storm. I have dream new dreams of attending college and fulfilling dreams I've had ever since I was little.
But to reach these goals and dreams, I need your help. I need all of you to bring awareness to the devastation cancer brings. Please text a friend or post to bring more people down here tonight to donate. An extra five or ten dollars on campus of thirty thousand could make a huge difference. Thank you so much for listening. Hoping for me a third time is a charm. Let's find a cure and wipe cancer off the planet.